Redeemer is 25 years old as a church this year, started by a small group of men and women who lived in the city center of Indianapolis and had a heart for what would it look like for the gospel to be preached and, and lived out amongst our neighbors? What would it look like for us to have a way as a church to love the people around us and to point them to Jesus? That's been Redeemer's heart since we started. Lots and lots of the people who call Redeemer home can walk or bike here. And we would say that our location at 16th and Delaware is central to who we are, to our identity. So this building, this neighborhood really does shape who we are and, and how we live out and understand our faith. But I also wouldn't say we're just a neighborhood church. We're trying to say, hey, where we are matters. And if this is gonna be your church home, then you're saying, I want to love the city. I want to be about this neighborhood. I wanna be about the neighborhoods of the city, not coming here to use the city, but actually to serve and love the city. The way in which art is woven into our mission and our calling and our worship as well, really reflects, I think, uh, faithful presence. Our building is actually the old First Presbyterian Church building. There was a philanthropist who bought this building with a vision of creating an art center for the neighborhood. And he invited Redeemer as a tenant. After about a year, this philanthropist who had put a lot of his own money into the building decided it wasn't the right fit, wasn't the thing for him to do. And so he actually approached Redeemer and said, I think you should buy the building from me you clearly saw God's hand in this and providing. And so out of that came the sense of, okay, hey, look, let's create the art center that people are expecting and wanting. And so Redeemer founded that, not because we thought, oh, let's be an art church, but we thought, let's be a church that loves our neighbors and meets them where they are. We certainly believe we're called to this place and so involved in that is the people that happen to be around us. So we have a lot of people who work or volunteer in the city in various ways. I'm a physician in uh, one of the inner city clinics so we see primarily people with Medicaid and no insurance. Um, that's a very common pattern. A lot of people at Redeemer are living their lives in some way involved with the city. In various different ways, people are involved with helping Indianapolis be a healthy city and trying to bring the kingdom of God to Indianapolis. Several years ago, we were at a point where our mortgage was coming to a balloon payment that was due. And we realized that we either needed to refinance that and take a long-term strategy with that, or we could do a small capital campaign, pay off the mortgage, and then we could roll that money into uh, other initiatives. And we decided as a congregation that we wanted to pay off the mortgage, but uh, continue to put that amount of money that we were paying on the mortgage into a church planning fund. When Redeemer called us here to the church, the call from the get-go was uh, to be a church planter which means from the beginning, uh, I was invited into a process with the congregation and with the leaders of this church to identify first a location for a church to be planted. Where is Redeemer being called by the Lord to plant? Where are they resourced to plant? Do we have the people and the skills to plant a particular neighborhood? One of the things that we really appreciated was this intentionality on their part. They didn't have all the answers figured out, but they were intentional. They put aside money faithfully every year towards the work of church planting with the eventual hope of calling a church planter. When we came here, it wasn't an agreement on process, it wasn't an agreement on place, it wasn't an agreement on a plan, it was a shared heart. It was a heart to proclaim Jesus in the city, to see more people know him and to do that through the work of church planting. We identified the near west side of Indianapolis. So we have been moving forward in that direction and learning as we go, what does it look like to enter into that community, to see a new church planted and trying to disciple the congregation along the way and share what's going on and the steps that we're taking to move in that direction. Our family moved into the neighborhood of Hallville, which is one of three or four key neighborhoods that make up the near west side of Indianapolis. It's history for 140 years is neglect and discrimination. And you see that today, and it's every disparity across the board, education, health, income, 
Our home ownership rate is half of what it is elsewhere in the city. There is also a real spiritual darkness in our neighborhood. For us, it's trying to discern how do we enter into a neighborhood that has seen so much neglect and disparity and yet also affirm and honor the beauty that God has created there, the faithful presence of leaders who have been there before we got there and who have been working and doing God's work in that neighborhood before we arrived. When I first heard that maybe Redeemer was going to come over onto the west side or they were exploring where they were going to go, it, were, it was met honestly with a little bit of, okay, here we go again. Is it another church that's just going to reflect themselves in another community versus really doing the hard work to say, what does it look like to put a church that truly speaks to this community? So it really wasn't until I met Ben and understood his heartbeat and what he was going after and knowing that Charles as the senior minister was giving him freedom to explore that, their elders were giving them patience to allow Ben and Neva to really figure that out and figure it out with a core team that the trust built. And so if you're around Ben, it doesn't take long to realize that he is going to make an impact because he wants to hear what God has to say and he's slow enough to figure that out and then he's bold enough to act on it. Our core group uh, for this church plant is intentionally small. It's intentionally small because we want the church primarily to grow through outreach and works of evangelism. It's intentionally small because as we think about taking a team from Redeemer to join us, uh, most of Redeemer does not look like the near west side. And so a large team from Redeemer coming over together would really kind of defeat the purpose of the work we're trying to do in the neighborhood. We're a couple of white middle-class suburbanites <laughs> thinking of planting a church in Hawville or being part of that. Yeah, that God's at work in that. Being in a place where I have a lot to learn and to the extent that I have resources, I'm happy to offer them, but it comes with just, just a big dose of humility. There's a tendency to want to come in and think that you've got a lot to give, to just be present and to see and listen to other people's stories. People need to know that you care about them, you're there for them as opposed to you're there for your project. So at this moment, uh, when we think about where we are as a church plant, you know, we have taken some beautiful intentional steps moving closer toward starting a corporate worship service on Sunday morning. We've had a preview service of sorts back in December. A few months ago, uh, we're starting to see more Bible studies established in the neighborhood, but we aren't quite yet to the point of starting that Sunday morning worship service. We know that once the worship service begins, like the culture of your church is pretty set at that point. So we would rather spend more time reaching some of these benchmarks, more Bible studies, solid core team, another person on pastoral staff with us before we see that worship service begin. So those are the benchmarks that we're shooting for here in the next 12 months or so. For Redeemer to be a church that plants churches, it doesn't just take the money, it takes us being equipped and our hearts being uh, motivated for this and it takes uh, like people ready to step up and say I want to be a part of that and people who are already living out the vision of evangelism and discipleship we're still in a place where I think we have a lot of room to grow into that I wouldn't say that man we're in that place where everything's perfect we're ready and I think we're growing into and saying aspirationally God this is who we want to be this is what we want to to do, will you grow us toward that heart that we believe you have, that we need your grace to lead us toward.